Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. I would like to discuss the fabrication of a tray for the taking of a mucostatic impression and the mixing of the impression cement. The tray is usually fabricated out of aluminum, and this is a special aluminum, Alcoa D216 alloy. The advantage of the aluminum is that you can make a light and a thin tray with this material. If you use a plastic such as Formatray, in this lingual bar area, usually the, in order to get enough strength, you have to make the acrylic so thick that it displaces the tongue and other soft tissues. So for a small tray like this, the aluminum is the preferred material. The fabrication of this is very, very simple. A piece of pink base plate wax is adapted to the ridge area on an impression. And this is to act as a relief. And then two more thicknesses of pink base plate wax are built on top of this. And this is then invested in a partial denture investment material and invested in a larger partial denture ring. And then this is heated to 1,300 degrees to get a proper burnout. And then that mold is cooled down to 400 degrees. And the reason this is done is that if you try to cast aluminum to a hot mold, it becomes very porous and pitty and gives you a very poor surface. And if you want a nice shiny surface, a smooth surface, as you see here, you have to cool that mold down to around 400 degrees before you cast. The fabrication of uh, the tray for the maxillary is quite similar. Pink base plate wax is adapted over the area where you want the tray. This is to act as a relief, one thickness, and then two thicknesses for the tray itself, and this is invested in the same way. Now, should you have a full arch impression or something that's going to be larger than this, it is then permissible to use formatry because in that kind of bulk, you get good strength. Once you have the tray fabricated, then this is taken to the mouth and check to see if it fits and it does not impinge on the soft tissues, especially in these peripheral areas. And if it rests in there without disturbing the patient, then you're ready to take your mucostatic impression with the impression cement. The patient should be premedicated ahead of time before the appointment when you do take your mucostatic impression. And we usually use atropine sulfate. It's one one hundred and 50th of a grain, and this is given three hours, two hours, one hour, and at the time of the appointment. And this is usually sufficient to dry the patient out so that we will not have saliva displacing this very accurate impression cement. Some op operators like to use banthene bromide. However, I don't think it's as effective as the atropine. There's one precaution. If the patient has any history of glaucoma, then this material should not be used. It's wise then to prepare the patient for the type of impression that's going to be taken. It's very important that the muscles and all the soft tissues are at complete rest. So I would try this tray in several times and instruct the patient to just relax, think peaceful thoughts, and close their mouth so their lips just touch and so their teeth are not touching together but their lips touch and uh, do this three or four times so you so they have uh, uh, an idea of what this is going to feel like and then we take gauze strips of two by two gauze we open them up and put a strip of gauze in the buccal vestibule and the lingual on next to the tongue and we'll use four of these and let them all stick out in the front of the mouth so that when we're ready to take the impression, we can grab this gauze and we can pull it out very quickly uh, and then put our tray in so there's no residual saliva. Sometimes the salivary glands will seep just slightly and little pools of saliva will then displace this impression cement. If the patient 
is very nervous, it's wise to premedicate them with a sedating agent. And if a patient is a gagger, especially in a maxillary situation, then it's wise to have them gargle with viscous xylocaine to anesthetize the soft tissues. Now I'd like to demonstrate the mixing of the impression cement. The impression cement is called Ackermann's, and there are two liquids that can be used. There is a fast liquid and a slow setting liquid. If the humidity is under 50%, then you should use the fast liquid. If the humidity is from 50 to 70% in your office, then you should use a half or 50-50 mix of slow and fast liquids. If the humidity is above 70% or it's quite warm, then you should use all slow. The ratio then is one teaspoon of liquid to two teaspoons of the powder. The powder itself is very fine and it's almost like a talcum. And it tends to fly all over the lab and the bench top, so it's wise to use some kind of protective covering, an apron or something, and, and cover the bench top so this material doesn't get over everything. There's a saying on the back of this can, this material is very sticky, and uh, the saying on the back of the can is that if you stick to Ackerman cement, it will stick to you. The average case will take three teaspoons of liquid and six teaspoons of powder. And that's what we're going to mix here. If you have a small case, then use just two teaspoons of liquid and four teaspoons of powder. If you have a large case, then use four of liquid and eight of powder. When I talk, I lose track. I think this is number five. It's wise to roll this can first to fluff the powder. And then, as you see, I'm using level teaspoons. I think that's six. And you make a little well in the center, just like mashed potatoes and gravy. And then, for the, the dispensing of the liquid, it's wise to use one of these medicine dispensing cups as they use in hospitals. And these are available from your uh, medical supply stores. And you'll see when I dispense this liquid that uh, it is quite viscous. And we'll be using three teaspoons. And we'll check the three teaspoon mark. And as you see as I pour this, it's just like molasses. Just like molasses. And then we'll pour this in the very center, making sure we get it all out. And then it's best to keep your cool and mix this very slowly. And don't drop it around too fast or else the powder will fly all over the place. And we try to squeeze the powder into the liquid, as you see here. Taking your time. You can usually teach your dental assistant to mix this if you're after a, a couple of demonstrations. And we try to get this powder incorporated in it. First, it'll look like you'll never get all the powder in. It's just like mixing a periodontal pack. And then all of a sudden, it becomes rather tacky and it sticks together. And at this point then, we try to get the material off of both sides of the spatula, and then we start stropping it and putting lots of pressure on it, like we're trying to push it through the pad and blending it back and forth so it becomes very fluid. And the more you mix this, the more fluid it's going to become. And we're just about right here. And this is the consistency, then, that you would like.
Now, when you load this on your tray, it's very important that you do it correctly. This material will set up rather quickly when it hits the moisture and the warmth of the body. And I don't have a patient here, so I'm going to demonstrate this on a just a tray. You take a scoop of the impression material and apply it to one side of this mandibular tray. And once you do that, then you keep the tray moving in a figure eight motion. This keeps the impression material from running off the tray. And then while you're going in this figure eight motion, you scoop another load of material, scoop it on the other side of the tray, keep it going like so. And then you take a third scoop on the lingual bar area. And then you give your dental assistant the signal and she will pull the gauze out of the patient's mouth, and then she will take the spatula and place a little bit along the linguals of the lower anterior teeth, and then you simply put the tray in, drop it in, don't push it, just drop it in the proper place and get your hands out, have the patient close, and just relax, and just leave it there until the cement is hardened completely. On a maxillary, on a maxillary model, it's just a little bit different. You take the impression cement and apply it mostly to the lingual of this tray, impression tray, and then it is placed in and then seated so that the material will all run forward. And when it starts coming out, the anterior part of the tray, then you get your hands out and let it come to place, come to rest. When the material has hardened sufficiently, then it can be pulled out and then examined to make sure you have the proper detail. And then if you do have the proper detail, then a model is made. This is poured up in stone. And after this has been poured up, this can be removed very easily by soaking this in hot water or boiling water. This will dissolve the cement or make the cement soft, and you can just pry this off. And then that model then is outlined with a pencil. For example, on this particular mucostatic impression, and now the model, with an indelible pencil, we've outlined the extent of our ridge area. We've also outlined the areas where we want the little dimples to hold the struts that are going to be eventually placed on this. And then this is sent to a laboratory. The laboratory that we've found most successful for this type of impression is Southdale Laboratory in Minneapolis, Minnesota. They will then send back a base, as you see here, and if I hold this still, perhaps you can see the little struts that are sticking up, and the little struts that will hold the attachment, and then this will eventually then be door laid together in the mouth. You notice the little dimples that are placed here for the acrylic to uh, attach to. What I would like to do now then is to take you into the lab and then allow each of you to make a mix of this cement so you get the experience of mixing it and the, uh, the feel of the material. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.